look at the size of that. Bank popular. What a bit of kit. That's just amazing. <laughs> Whoa, sexy. Very sexy. Tom Jim, try and sold there away. Hopefully we won't have to be using those. Oh, man. 
Portland Bill. And to windward we have Leopard. And just through the gap there we have a Rambler. We are 100 foot uh, Code zero. Working a little dream at the moment. There she is, Land's End. Quite a lot of traffic about now. There's quite a few of the other boats are riding shore there and they're going to have to squeeze pretty hard to get out of that hole, I think. We've just been sailing free and fast. Got about a knot and a half on these guys. Fingertip sailing. A little bit uh, wild. Free and easy, yeah. It feels like the fairground ride today. Here's a rundown then, Ian. So, we are off. What time is it? Time is 2.43. 2.43, 2.42. We are off London. Yep. Direct line sailing to the dock, which is 120 miles away. 70. 70. The wind is here, <laughs> up building. Got a nice sail up there that's giving us a bit more drive than the just the jib. Just crossed the figure of the place and they're all over there. They're not big. And behind us, we've got competitors. All bigger than us. A paradox, our multiple rival is three miles ahead of us. And it's gonna be like this for a while. It's good, it was happy. Eating well. Eating very well. Too well. Is that what I mean? I don't think anyone can complain so far. Uh, no breakages. No punch wood. No punch ups. No collisions. And uh, kind of a fun reach last night. A bit of a bit of slightly just off the wind, wasn't it? To try and keep the speed up. 
fetch, I think, with not much pressure. Yeah. It's going to be a bit more pressure tonight now. I think we're in for a very fruity 25 plus knot. Skipper's down here somewhere. Oh, there he is, look. Sound asleep. How many yachtsmen fall over the side with their penis in their hands, man? Yeah, that's what the bailer's for. <laughs> so he's just getting rid of a bit of weight here. You've still got it after that uh, report in uh, Sailing Anarchy, then. <laughs> It's still attached.
empty holes, I think. Look, they're putting another reef in. Do you think we should really put one in as well? I think so too, he's going. Twenty people on board. I mean, that's more than one helicopter, isn't it? Traveller down. to 18 knots, just probably about 20 knots of breeze. Last night the winds were uh, quite high, 30 to 35 knots at times. The sea conditions were uh, pretty rough to be honest. Uh, they're probably moderate in a forecast but to us at the time I think they were very uh, broken up. No real nice sets of swell to get into. It was just a mismatch of waves and it was uncomfortable. Uncomfortable ride, but Drama Queen, she just plowed on through it. Just a good little boat. I actually can't believe how good and how well this boat rides in extreme conditions. Are they up for another bacon sandwich and Matt? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? And how do you feel about getting around the fast net? Um, I'm bloody glad actually. I mean, uh, you know, we had to beat the last 15 miles, but uh, Pity those poor buggers <laughs> stuck halfway across the RSD and have got a bang in for four hours. Yeah. Uh, so, kind of a bit of a, bit of a risk. Really. So, do you think, uh, what are we doing out there at the moment? Uh, we're doing about sort of 14. Okay. Uh, it's about 18 knots of breeze. And are we on a, a heading for uh, the end of the Old Sicily, I believe? No, not yet. We're just we're going out to the spread of Mars, the Pantanius Boy, about five miles. Um, Five 
get back to the city. All downhill from there, eh? It will be downhill and we just hope we get it. Yeah, because the wind's due to change and uh, come back to a beat, so the people are going to take a little bit longer. If you take too long, you get to beat both ways, eh? I can always tell when Simon comes on, the boat seems to speed up. And uh, Dagobles are howling a good one a second ago, you might better hear it in a minute. Just swap me a little toast over there, look. I'll show you out the front window, because... Uh, don't want to let me toast burn. You can hear that hot in the background, which is uh, the Dagobords. These boats really do sail pretty fast. People don't actually have a true understanding of what it's like to really go quickly. Because the gun boats, a 60, much bigger boat. I think you could have bought our entire fleet in this race for the price of one of those. But uh, after that, I think that does count with some paradox. Drama Queen chasing him hard. And then we've got Dazzle. They have uh, got Michael Butterfield on board. He's 80 something. So uh, last night wouldn't have been very comfy for him. Well, it wasn't very comfy for anyone. So they're calming it down to about five knots. You can't win it if you don't finish. Size are we talking about there? 100 square meters. 100 square meters, and is that class is the big one then? That is the biggest thing we've got on board. Last yeah. time we took it down, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Of course, down the mine. Just get it. And they were gone. Where are we at? Where are we at? We're 84 miles from the Bishop's Rock. And how's your mum's cake? That was pretty darn good actually. Thank you, Mum. Fruit cake to die for. Alright. Gonna have a little look at the uh, state of the boat. Uh, not looking too bad considering we were shoken to death 
last night. <laughs> Absolutely shaken to death. And there's the, uh, the bank sales. Performing very well. Thank you, Daryl. Just need wind, eh? Bank sales. Just need wind. New logo for you. <laughs> Daz cat, not Daz cat. Daz cat. <laughs> What's in the pan today? Daz. Bagwell. Bagwell. Lots of pasta, so we can make the boat lighter by using more water. <laughs> <laughs> and what's on the uh, earphones today? Uh, that's some sort of classical, sort of mellow music to go with the uh, go with the lack of wind. The evening ambiance. Yeah. You, you amaze me. You know, this is sort of a bit of guitar plucking sort of sounds. So we could actually plug it in and uh, put a little lead. Pippy you know, people. And uh, we'll go with a bit of dinner, you know. Seeing as we're not on becalmed to uh, have a little bit of a uh, sit down and a nice meal on the fast net here. <laughs> Taking the racing really seriously. <laughs> Indeed. Well, that's the shot. I've got to go back out and take my plate on the helm. And uh, I'll see you boys enjoy the meal and uh, catch you later. Dinner, sunsets, channel coming up. Well, oh, RSC still on it really. Mellow music, bottle of wine. A bit nice than that, right? Hanging on the grim death, going, look at the size of those waves. Can you uh, update us on the situation? Final leg back to Plymouth. Beating up the channel. Ian's reading his book on uh, what do you what's the book about then Ian? British economic and social history. Our captain's gone to sleep. Allegedly the boat goes a lot faster when he's asleep. The right leg. <laughs> or is it the right direction, yes. The last supper. Just to prove that you can make a full on uh, nice meal on a dash cap, beating the windward, doing 10 knots. Clean out the window. 
choppy last little thing and what we're going to do is call leftovers and so we've got some onion some celery which not everyone's uh, keen on so I'm going to fry it quite well some mixed herbs yeah we're going to jam all of those in there there we go all the leftovers and some garlic and there's some ginger in there as well oh yeah the smell of that is amazing already no escape. Very nice. And uh, I've chopped up the last bit of bacon that we've got, and the last three peppers, and we've got some cherry tomatoes. I think I should probably put it into pasta, but we've had pasta for the last three days, so I'm actually going to add rice to it. The salt and pepper, a bit of the usual chili sauce, and. Uh, I reckon we'll be there. In with the bacon. A little bacon on there. Got some nice uh, juices coming out of that. Yep, it's right. getting a little bit bumpy there. It's alright. So we've got a, quite a nice sort of brace position on there. And if you can do, do it like that, it's a, you know, completely locked in. But what are galleys? You've got to be careful on a boat. The boats bump up and down. I have lots of ideas about design on this trip. Biff has got his little you know, safety belt for the water bottle there, which is quite good. You know, when you're making a cup of tea here, you know, you've got to be a little bit wary on the, on that because you can come to the fiddle, it warm, and suddenly it's down on 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 your lap. And if that was hot, that's not good. So normally, if it's really rough, wear your oil skins. Gives you a bit of a safety feature. Uh, I had lots of other thoughts about galley design as well, uh, which, uh, you know, when you're actually on the other tack, the water drains away, so it'd be nice to, you know, get it back to the sink. And, uh, and I think really, you know, these open style lockers, although they're lightweight and they're affordable, you know, if you had a, you know, a really big, uh, bang like that sea, you know, you, you can get the old coffee pot coming out and landing. Glass. Don't have glass on boats. It's starting to look pretty good. All frying away in there, look. And so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the peppers in. Bang. There we go. Peppers are in. I'll give them a little, a little stir around in there. Suck up on all that bacon juice, and uh, that should be quite nice. Again, I'm just put the spoon in the sink here. You know, I guess you know it's catamaran. It's not too bad. You know, these uh, these china cups have actually managed to make it all the way around. This is Simon's cup. This is from uh, To Dad Love Abby. Oh, isn't that nice? And it's uh, it could only got one very small chip on that side, so. It's uh, it's pretty good, but should you have, should you have glass, should you have china, tea, tea's very good out of a proper mug. So maybe, uh, maybe you've got to have the odd, the odd item on board. I'll give them a little bit of a stir in there. Mmm, yeah, that smells good. Still sizzling away nicely. And uh, we're going to use Simon's uh, favourite here. Is this from the Caribbean, from your Caribbean trip? Uh, it's not from the Caribbean trip, but it is from the West Indies. So, so it's, uh, wet. No, just a good, honest, reasonably priced hot pepper sauce. Ah, excellent. So we've got that much left. How much do you think we should put in? Um, I'd have thought probably a good, um, a good thumb, thumb. A thumb pull? Thumb pull. So we're going with a, with a thumb pull. As Simon's recommendation. Oh, that was a bit more humble. <laughs> yeah, but well, better not, you know, better not use it all up. Hang on a minute. It's very difficult to uh, do it. No, it's not that difficult. Maybe, maybe, not. maybe it is difficult. <laughs> trying, trying to film and cook at the same time is a little bit tricky. Yes. So the Ancona's in there. There we are. Apparently doing 0.9 of a knot faster than Paradox up here. So there is no prisoners. There is absolutely no prisoners going on. We're cooking, we're racing, we're doing it all. We've got those cherry tomatoes here, look. 
they're gonna go in. In they go. We had to go faster, had to catch up. That's why we're doing 0.9 of a lot more than Paradox. It's because we don't have any water in our tanks. We do have our little jerry cans, we have a few of those left and some emergency water, but Nothing in the tanks, nothing to get clean later. The boys out here are just going for attack. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in eight, eight seconds. And we're on the move again. Pass your camera there, Simon. Another little beauty. So um, what I'm gonna do is put the, uh, the wild rice in. There we go. How easy was that? Didn't think about doing this separately, but seems it. it's our last supper. And we're in a bit of a rush. And we're really interested in sailing. And we just want some fuel. I'm just gonna chuck it in. Come on. There we go. Really good. They are excellent. V tree dine in basmati wild rice. Yeah, good advert for them. We'd like to sponsor a boat. <laughs> Bee tree. <laughs> Perfect sailor's food. Yeah. Anyway, somehow, these plastic things, uh, you get a wooden one of these, really. Get that in there. Nice, sir, it up. Brilliant. <laughs> Back again on the other tack. Actually, a lot smoother on this tack. And, uh, and there it is. I don't know what we're going to call this. What are we going to call this? We had uh, rambling eggs, didn't we? We did have rambling eggs, which is not not particularly a good joke. But what's left over? <laughs> we had, uh, had to eat it in the dark. What point are we at? Oh. No, which point? Lizard. Oh, lizard rice. A lizard. Lots of time. Rain coming into the finish. Yep, just a couple of miles to go. So just checking where the finish line is. Got the torch to illuminate cell numbers. Uh, we've just radioed up the uh, Ocean One to let them know we're on our right way. Ocean One. Just the heads up on the two boats here. We've got two that are quite short. We're just going to radio. There's one here without lights at all. I'm not sure whether these are ours. Uh, we're just going to see first and then the others. That's Peter from the Royal Western, I believe. Uh, Peter, 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 Thank you. We're going to start a bonfire on board that one to try and illuminate themselves. First time you get the barbecue going, mates. Go on, Breeze. Uh, Ocean One, there is another yacht coming in uh, which is just old at that point, but I don't want to get involved with the ferry, so I'm going to identify that the ferry's gone through. There's a 
amazing that huge ship came through the bloody start line just like seconds before the kickoff, off not it? It's just unbelievable. Trouble for that, weren't they? What are we going to do? Tack? end of the yacht race you get a bang. It's better than that and getting run over by a ferry. Joys of yachting. Just got in and the mainsail doesn't come down. So uh, aren't we lucky that didn't happen in the Irish Sea. So Ian's gonna uh, shimmy up there and have a look to see what the problem is. Back to this in that seaway in the Irish Channel. Yeah. That would have been like death on a stick up there. Bad enough now. 